Hi everybody, this is the Algebra 2 video for section 2.1.5. It's the last one we're going to do on parabolas. And what we're going to do is we are going to be coming up with an equation for a parabola based on getting some points from it, all right? So within this lesson, you should have a Google Doc that has um, the title, um, something like the jumping, the jackrabbit problem. That's what it's called. And the question here, or the section is 2.1.5, how can I model data? And we're going to be modeling mathematics with parabolas. Okay, so what we did is we took this lesson straight out of the CPM book. And then what I want to do is I want to wrap up this class by um, just giving you some generic information similar to what your homework's going to be like. And then um, having you solve some problems. I'm also going to have you guys review completing the square and finding the vertex of a parabola. Because that's super important and I don't want us to forget this. Okay, so... Um, I'm just going to use the CPM lesson to start out this lesson, and then we'll kind of go from there. So in the past few lessons, you have determined how to move graphs of parabolas around. That is, how to transform them on a set of axes. You have also learned how to write quadratic equations in a graph, in graphing, and in standard form. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, look at reviewing graphing form. Remember, that's also called vertex form. Right? Okay, graphing form was in the form y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. All right, a's that are greater than 1 are vertical stretches. A's that are less than 1 would be a reflection over the x-axis. A's that are between 0 and 1 would be a vertical compression. H is our horizontal shift. And remember that's in the opposite direction. Plus means to the left, minus means to the right. And K is your vertical shift. Up is plus, down is minus. All right, that's straight up the way it's supposed to be. The horizontal shift is the only one that's a little different. All right, standard form. Oh, and in this one too, your vertex we found to be at the point H, K. Okay, standard form is also useful. It's form Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. And that's where A, B, and C are real numbers. All right. Okay, so kind of going on in what they were saying here. In this lesson, you'll put these new skills to work as you use parabolas and their equations to model situations. All right. So some of you guys may actually switch classes at semester. Some of you won't. It's kind of weird because does semester really change anything? We really don't know. Um, but we always refer back to the jumping jackrabbits problem. So here it is. It's question 264. All right. In the diagram at the right, which is actually below because I copied and pasted this, um, it shows a jackrabbit jumping over a three-foot high fence. To just clear the fence, the rabbit has to start its jump at a point four feet from the fence. Sketch the situation and write an equation that models the path of the jackrabbit. Show or explain how you know your sketch and your equation fit the situation. All right. So questions that they wanted me to ask or discussion points would be, how can we make a graph fit the situation? Super duper important. Um, what information do we need in order to find an equation? And how can we be sure that our equation fits the situation? All right. So in this one, you have this jackrabbit, and this rabbit is... Um, it is jumping over a three foot high fence, okay? So this is three feet high. All right, to just clear the fence, the rabbit must jump, must start its jump four feet from the point of the fence. So let's say our rabbit, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I am not an artist at all. So let's say our rabbit's gonna start here and jump up and then go down. Oh, that's actually not too bad. So it's a parabolic. Here, that's probably a little better. So our jackrabbit's going to jump over this fence, just clear the fence, and then go down. It says that it has to go, to clear it, it has to start four feet from the fence. So it has to start four feet here. 
Now, fences, you guys, if you've ever seen a fence, they're straight up and down with the ground, so this is going to be perpendicular. That ends up being somewhat important because this side of the parabola should be the same as that one, okay? So what we need to do is we have to find some points on this parabola. Some important points would be, and I'd ask this in class, what's an important point? Um, vertex would be an important point for a parabola. Um, X and Y intercepts would be important points for a parabola, but I want to find a parabola's important points. So what I need to do is I need to decide if I have a coordinate plane, which I am just going to show with pencils here, where would I move my coordinate plane? Now, one of the things I tell kids all the time is, what is the nicest point in the world to use in math? And the nicest point in the world to use in math on a coordinate plane would probably be 0, 0, right? Yeah, it is. All right, so this is where we're going to do this. We're going to do something like, and actually since I have a ruler, I can do this. I don't have to do it. So, so let's say this is my coordinate plane. Um, now, you can put your coordinate plane anywhere you want, but if you guys can use the nicest point in the world, why not, right? Yeah, so I actually didn't do too bad with that one. So let's say this is my coordinate plane. So I need some points here, right? Well, this is the point zero, zero. All right, then the vertex I actually have because it'd be four, three, because I go to the right four, up three. All right, and then my question would be how long... I could find that point too. How long is that? Well, if this is four feet, wouldn't it also have to, since it's a parabola and these would be symmetric four feet, this would be the point eight, zero. So then my next question would be like, okay, we have enough stuff here. I'm going to tell you right now, you only need two points to make a parabola, okay? Now here's the thing, you guys. One of the points has to kind of make that parabola stay. Would it make sense that if I have these three points and I have to pick two, if I pick the X and the Y intercept, couldn't there not be another parabola that does this? Couldn't there be another one that shifts all the way up? So I don't want to pick the X intercepts. That's not one. But if I would pick this per, this um, point and then that X intercept, wouldn't that just give me one parabola? Yeah, there's no way you can draw another one. I can't flip it through this way because this is the vertex. It has to be the vertex right there, okay? If I choose this point. The last one, I didn't pick the vertex so it could move. So if this doesn't move and that x-intercept doesn't move, well, that is going to not move too. So that is what we're going to use. So to write the equation for the parabola, you need the vertex and another point. That's the least amount of information that I need to graph this or to come up with this equation. All right. So here's what I got. I got the vertex. I'm going to use that. Is that the point four, three? And the point I'm going to use, I would highly suggest you guys use zero, zero if you can. Um, we're going to get to a problem next. And in your homework, you won't be able to use the origin because I'm going to give you the point. All right. But if you can choose it and you can move it, why not use the origin? And most real life problems, you can use the origin. Problem is most math problems I'm going to give you aren't real life problems. All right, so here we go. So then I would say, okay, which one of these do you think I could use as far as graphing form or standard form to find the equation? Okay, what do I have? Well, let's see here. In this one, X's and Y's, I have an X and a Y. That's this point, right? But... If all I have is an X and a Y to substitute, I still have an A, a B, and a C. And I can't solve an equation with three variables, just not yet. I think that's chapter six. All right, and then the next one, okay, let's see here. Do I have enough information here where I could substitute into here? Okay, let's see here. The vertex is my HK, so I could put something in H and K. My point is my X and Y. All I gotta do is find the A value. I like it. So we need to use graphing form. which again was y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. All right, so in these numbers, remember, the 4 is the h, the 3 is the k, this is my x, and that's my y. What I love about 0, 0 is you can't mix up the x and the y because they're both the same, right? All right, here we go. So we're going to substitute. What's my y? We're going to put 0 in here, okay? So I'm going to have 0 equals, I don't have an a value. That's what I'm trying to find. But there is one thing you could tell me about the A value. Think about that for a second. What's one thing you could tell me about the A value? 
All right, next, here we go. X minus H, my X is zero, minus my H is four, squared, right? And then plus K plus three. Okay, let's do some order of operations here. Zero equals in the parentheses. We're gonna have negative four and we're gonna square that plus three. Zero equals negative four squared is 16A plus three, subtract three, divide by 16, a equals negative 3 sixteenths. I am going to check my answer and I'm going to have you guys do that too. Now, negative 3 sixteenths. Let's see here. That is a nice decimal. So I would be okay with A being negative 3 sixteenths or was that negative 0.1875. All right, so our equation is going to be Y equals my A value is negative 3 sixteenths times the quantity x, okay, minus h, my h was four, squared, and then plus three, right? I know that, feeling good about that. Okay, now I could also use y equals negative 0.1875 times x minus four squared plus three. I actually don't like decimals on these, you guys, because there are some of them that are super duper nasty. Um, and I would prefer us not use them, but if the decimal stops, you can use it. If it keeps going, use the fraction. So this is negative 3 over 16. I probably should put that in parentheses. Times x minus 4 squared, and then plus 3. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure all these points are on my table. So my table has a 0, 0, a 4, 3, and an 8, 0, and that checks. I feel great about that. All right? So that's my first one. All right. So you should be able to come up with those situations. This is going to be problem number two. Write the equation for the parabola. Whose vertex is negative 1, 9 and contains... The point negative seven, negative three. There we go. This is probably going to be nasty. And I'm going to be honest with you. I am just making this up. Then I'll look at one completing the square to get you guys reviewed on that because your homework has five of these kinds of problems and two review of completing the square. All right. All right. So here is this. We got Y equals A times the quantity X minus H squared plus K. All right. Here we go. We have... It contains negative 7, negative 3. Negative 7 is going to be the x I put in. Negative 3 is going to be the y I put in. Negative 1 is my h. And 9 is my k. Okay? Just because, just knowing this, you guys, you know your equation is going to be y equals a times the quantity. Okay, if it's x, if it's moving to the left one, wouldn't that be x plus 1 squared and then plus 9? You know that it's like that for sure. Which makes sense because if I would put negative one in here, minus a negative one is plus. All right. So here we go. You can use this or you can substitute in here. It doesn't really matter. My, I'm going to throw negative three in for Y. I'm going to put negative seven in for X. Okay. So neg negative three is my Y. That equals, I don't know my A. My X is what? Negative seven minus a negative one. That's plus one, which I had over here squared plus K is nine. All right, here we go. Negative three equals uh, negative 7 plus 6, that's negative, or negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. We're going to square that times a plus 9. Negative 3 equals, this is 36a plus 9, subtract 9. Oh, this was kind of nice. Divide by 36. a is equal to negative 12 over 36 is negative 1 third. Now, I know negative 1 third is 0.3 repeating. I would not use that at all, Okay. Um, I would use y equals my a is negative one third times the quantity x plus one squared plus nine. And then you guys all have the ability to check these and I totally would. Here we go. Uh, negative one third times x plus one squared plus nine. I should have points at negative one nine. Ooh, I did something wrong. Oh, there's a negative here. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so I should have a point at negative 1, 9. 
Yep, and I should have one at negative seven, negative three. Yep, there you go. Okay, so that is that. I'll do another quick one just for those of you that need it. If not, we'll just you can just fast forward to the next review thing. All right, actually, I don't think I'm going to have time to do that. I'm going to have to complete my square. Last one, complete the square. Okay, we're going to have y equals x squared minus 6x plus 2. Okay, x minus 6. Okay, so x squared is x and x. 6 is 3 and 3. They're both minus because that would give me y equals x minus 3 squared. All right. X times X is X squared. On the outside is a negative 3 and negative 3. Um, negative 3 times negative 3 is plus 9. We're going to subtract 9. Okay, so this is right here. 2 minus 9 is negative 7. Vertex is at 3, negative 7. All right. Sorry about that. I know I almost I went real fast through that, but I'm almost out of time. Good luck on your